everybody. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to explain a little bit um, about acoustic. Um, I've done it since 2008. I learned this medium uh, well before I learned cold wax and oil. And um, as some people know that you've watched my YouTube video called My Encaustic Life, where I try to just give you kind of a background of why it is that I love it. Let me just say that for those of you who are new to encaustic, um, encaustic means burning in, and it comes from the Greek word encaustikos. And um, my love of encaustic happened when I saw an encaustic painting, and it was so smooth and lustrous that I, I just couldn't even believe what I was looking at. And so um, I, I started to work in this medium and I thought I would do a demo in it. And I'm about to launch my mini course. A lot of you know about it already. And also um, I will be one of 26 instructors in a one year masterclass all in encaustic. So if you love encaustic and you're, you know, you might be a beginner, intermediate or, you know, advanced. Um, if you don't already know about this, it's called Painting with Fire. And it's um, put together by uh, Laura Murphy in Ireland. And you can go to my um, my special affiliate link, which is encausticmasterclass.com. And if you sign up with my link, you get my free mini course in encaustic. So I'm going to turn my screen down now and get started. I want to kind of just show you um, the tools, uh, the basics. And let me just get this situated right. Uh, I've got a heated palette on my right here. And this is what I'm doing. I'm painting with molten wax. So if you've never seen that before, um, I know you can't see my entire palette, but you can see some of the colors and uh, just all of us today, all the people that I've invited to, um, to be on this call, we are all going to be doing what I call the play stage. And I talk about this in my powerful design and personal color course. And so I'm going to start by, this is my propane torch. So the heating in process requires heat, and I choose to use a propane torch. So bear with me while I heat this up for a second. Okay, I'm going to let that cool for just a second. This is one that I just did um, the other day as kind of an example for the mini course, um, showing you a lot of different techniques. And actually, a lot of this is dry mark making material. You've heard the other artists joining in today are um, also going to be doing a lot of mixed media work. Here are some smaller paintings at um, six by six inches. And I love to work small. I love to work large. You know, it doesn't matter to me what size it is. So now this is warm, right? It's warm to the touch. What can you do? Um, when the surface is warm. And I have already put two coats of beeswax and one coat of encaustic medium on here for those who um, work in this medium. So what I'm gonna do, just for fun, um, one of the things I love about this medium is texture tools. So I went to the thrift store and got myself a whole bunch of texture tools. They're really fun. And the only thing about it is you gotta kinda know when uh, to use them in terms of like the surface. So this is warm and this is a good time to start making some marks. So I'm just going to try to, you're not going to see them um, yet, but that's kind of part of the fun is that I can't really see it either. I'm going to show you how it is that you go from not seeing it to seeing it. Okay. So I'm going to just, this is um, something I got at the hardware store. And when the wax is just at the right kind of warm, you know, you're able to make all these really wonderful impressions with the various things that you find, you know, find them on a walk, or you might find them at a store, thrift store, here's some hardware cloth. And this is, um, because this is the play stage, a lot of times, um, I'm just, I'm not, I'm certainly not thinking very much, uh, as most of you know. Okay, so I'm, this is like a saw, a chainsaw chain, I believe. And I'm just going to make some marks like that. To kind of press it in. All right, that's pretty crazy. I really don't know what it's going to look like yet. And the beauty of the play stage is that you don't really care. It's not about trying to make something pretty. This is like a pattern wheel. I love what this does. It makes these little dots. Okay, and I could do this forever, but I don't want to... Take too much time doing that. All 
right, so once you've got your board, um, you can't see you know anything yet. I'm gonna take an RNF pigment stick. This is graphite gray, and I just decided to clean off the end, and I'm going to bring out those marks now. And these RNF pigment sticks, uh, anyone who's used them before knows how luscious and beautiful they are. Now I could use a number of ways to spread this around. I'm gonna use a paper towel and try to rub it into all those marks I just made. So this is kind of like an early step, you know, if you love texture and if you love, you know, mixed media. So encaustic isn't only about using encaustic paint. You're gonna see that I'm gonna use a lot of different mixed media materials from pan pastels to Sorel transfer paper, just depending on the time that we have. Um, so this board went from plain encaustic medium. It had a warm cast to it. And now it actually has some texture. So I'm just gonna hold that up for a second so you can kind of see what that looks like. You can kind of see some of the materials. Um, now the RNF pigment stick went into these uh, impressions that I made. And so the idea though is that you kind of, in the early stage, wanna take off almost all of the oil. So for that, you just need some cooking oil. So put that on a paper towel and just rub that a little bit more. The reason being that a little bit of oil paint on the surface is fine before you fuse it, but if you have too much, then that can get in the way of the integrity of the next layer. And the idea of fusing in means that before I do anything else, I will want to fuse this lightly in with my propane torch. And I do like to use a propane torch for most types of encaustic. There are times when I'll use a heat gun, but I'm going to be using a torch. So now you can see that I have taken off most of the oil, but it has shown you the texture that I put down there. So that's kind of how I start. Now I'm gonna fuse it in. I'm just elevating it on a silicone holder and I've got parchment paper underneath because it catches the drips and all right that's the burning in process so um probably can't see that too well now i've got all these colors here and i do love color and because i'm playing right now i'm not going to worry about anything just, I'm not using a limited palette, although sometimes I do, but not. I'm not going to do that this time. I'm just going to have fun. So here is some diluted yellow. Um, here is some pink. And you can kind of see how uh, the the um, the graphite, not the yeah, the graphite RNF pigment stick. Uh, it is still like there's still a little bit on the surface there. So like even here, it melted that away. And um, so I'm going to try some different textures here. The idea is just to get a lot of color on here first. Now these are mostly opaque colors and um, I like to just have fun and not think about anything. And you wanna keep your uh, colors at about 185 degrees. So I am monitoring the temperature. That's always a very good idea and that prevents smoke. Um, it is a very safe medium as long as you are very aware of what temperature everything is melting at. Okay, so I've done that much and I want to add some graphite powder. That is just a dry medium. And I'm gonna sprinkle some like this. Take a paper towel. I'm not going to worry if it goes over colors, and you'll see why in a minute. It's just really a lot of fun. There's something about graphite powder that I really love too, is that when you burnish it, um, it, it turns into like this metallic sort of um, beautiful sheen. I'm going to blow off the rest of this powder. Okay, the thing about encaustic too is that 
it's partly putting the stuff on like I've just done. You can see what a mess it is. It's, it's supposed to be ugly. Okay. Heads up. The play stage is supposed to be ugly. But um, the fun thing for me anyways, and encaustic is that it's also about um, taking it off. So I have a razor blade here. It's a really good way to, um, to take things away. So you put the graphite on and you can come all the way back down to the white of the board if you want to. So, and then I can come over the green and reveal that. And you can also recycle a lot of the wax you take off. You don't, you know, you can recycle it. And I talk about that in my mini course. I've generated a lot of paint that I have to melt down that's being collected in Ziploc bags. So um, I just want to show you a few things here that are kind of fun. The many ways that I will play. And because I do love mark making, it's just a tool that is fun and it you can see how it pulls that wax off in a very fine thread. Make sure I'm using the right part of that. Okay, so now I'm going to fuse this in again. Now, what can happen is you have full control over how much heat to apply. Now, if you're my son, you're going to heat it for a long time and um, watch the wax swirl like it'll marble. But I, I do a kind of a quick sweep, except I might want a little bit of that moving here. And just let it cool and um, even if, uh, once it's cooled down though you can actually start to do other things so let's see here it's it's a lot of layering so the whole thing about encaustic medium is that you're doing a lot of layering so I've got like a very thinned out this is um alizarin crimson thinned out so it's a glaze and I've got my my heating implements here are most of them I got at the thrift store so you don't have to go and buy a lot of stuff. A lot of it you can get at the thrift store. Pancake griddles, electric frying pans, and I even have a crock pot. So here's a glaze being applied. And you can see how, you know, and when you buy, if you were to buy an encaustic paint, just know that you can thin it out to become a glaze and that block is gonna last you a really long time. So yes, um, if you decide to buy your paints, for those of you that are in my mini course, just know that they last a very long time. You do not have to use them full strength. Okay, so here's some gray. I'm being a little bit careful not to um, go uh, like this is one layer. Um, now I'm not gonna put too many layers on top of that because I have not fused that in yet. Okay. And then I ask myself, you know, what don't I have? What haven't I done yet? I've got another glaze over here, which is like a yellow, but I'm going to change that color a little bit. Added some quinacridone magenta, which is also a glaze. So now I'm changing that color. And I have all different sizes of brushes that are kind of being heated on my palette. This will be a different color um, somewhat than what I have there, I think. So let's try that. It's a little darker. Just a little bit darker, not too much. Okay, I'm gonna fuse that in. Now you can probably see or not, I'm not sure, but if I hold it up there, maybe you can see that um, this area here, uh, which was all the graphite, that is really uh, split apart and that's due to the heat and I wanted that to happen. So that's one of those really cool effects. So you can come back in and you can do some of the things that I was doing before, you know, maybe I want to create some line in here. 
Um, it's a little bit soft, a little bit uh, warm still, but you kind of just get what you get. And you kind of, it's, it's one of those things where you have to figure out when is the right time to pull wax away? You know, when is the right time to say use a pan pastel? When it's just the right warmth, like that's pretty good, I think. Um, you can come in like this. And I'm working on an ampersand um, panel, which I love. It's probably one of my most favorite surfaces of all. And take a bamboo skewer. I'll get kind of texture here too. So, so these are finer marks. 